All right, I'm going to start by saying you are not in a class where the teacher is going to go step by step and show you how to solve a problem like this one, 2x plus 5 equals 27. And then the next thing they do is give you problem after problem after problem where they're exactly almost identical. Instead, this teacher is going to give you tools and ask you to solve new problems using those tools. In this video, I'm going to show you how to prove a mathematical statement because you're going to be asked to prove and derive statements throughout this course. To prove a statement in mathematics, we're going to use definitions, previously acquired knowledge, and logic to prove the general case. And I'm going to show you what I mean by definitions and the general case. The statement we're going to be proving today is this. The reflection of xy over the line yx is yx. Okay. So one thing we need to do this is the definition of reflection. One definition of reflection is this. Reflecting point xy over line L means moving xy in a direction perpendicular to L to a point that is equal distance from L but on the opposing side of L. Now that we have that, here's just one example of our statement. This specific example starts with the point 1, 2, and it's reflected over yx, or our line L, to 2, 1. Now we can see this diagram that 1, 2 is um, moved in a perpendicular direction to 2, 1, so the black line is perpendicular to the red line, and 1, 2 and 2, 1 are equal distance away from the red line. So you could say, look, it works. We've proven the statement. But this is only for one point. I also have to show for the point, uh, let's see, 0, 2, for negative 1, 1, for 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, um, 2 halves, 1 half. I have to prove it for every single point. I can't just show one example. I have to show all of the examples. So to do that, we're going to talk in general terms or with this general case. So here's a diagram that we want to see. We want something like x, y is reflected over to y, x. If we can prove and show this picture, then we have proven our statement. We always have to prove a general case, which typically involves variables, compared to a specific example that typically has numbers. For our proof, I'm going to start with this diagram, and xy is going to be AB, and it's going to be reflected over to CD. If we can show that A is equal to D, and B is equal to C, we have proven our statement that XY is reflected to YX. We can start by saying M is the midpoint between AB and CD. We know this because the diagram shows that AB and CD are equal distance from line L, from the red line. Now we can use our previous knowledge and say, therefore, M is at the point A plus C divided by 2, comma, B plus D divided by 2. That's our previous knowledge of the midpoint formula. If we apply the midpoint formula, that's where the point M lies. So we also know that M is on the line Y equals X. Well, if Y equals X, then our y coordinate should equal our x coordinate. b plus d divided by 2 equals a plus c divided by 2. And since they're both divided by 2, this implies that b plus d is equal to a plus c. This is our first step in our proof. We're going to put this equation to the side, but we're going to use it later. 
Now we're going to find the slope of the line containing A, B, and C, D. Basically the black line that connects A, B, and C, D. If we use our slope formula, we get Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, or D minus B over C minus A. Now, we know that this slope is perpendicular to the slope of y equals x, which is 1. The red line has a slope of 1. And any line that is perpendicular must be the opposite reciprocal. So the opposite reciprocal is negative 1. In other words, the slope b, sorry, d minus b over c minus a is negative 1. We'll do a little algebra with this equation. First, we'll times both sides by C minus A. So on the left-hand side, the C minus A's cancel. And then we're just left with negative one times C minus A on the right. So we'll distribute that negative one, and we have D minus B equals negative C plus A. This is the second equation we needed to get to. So with our midpoint equation, B plus D equals A plus C that we found, and our slope equation, D minus B equals negative C plus A, we can move forward to find one half of our proof. First, we'll start by just adding the two equations. We see that the B's cancel and the C's cancel, so we're left with 2D equals 2A. And if we divide both sides by 2, we have D equals A, which is one half of what we were trying to prove. All we need to do now is prove that B is equal to C. We know that D is equal to A. So with back substitution into the midpoint equation, we're going to start with B plus D equals A plus C, but D is equal to A. So I'm going to substitute D in for A. So now I have B plus A equals A plus C. Now if I minus A from both sides, we see that the A's cancel and all that is left is B is equal to C. So there we have it. A is equal to D and B is equal to C. So this is the general case for any AB the reflection is going to be BA.